Joseph Eric Zawinul, born in 1932 in Vienna, studied classical music. First, <laughs> the accordion, believe it or not. No, why mother let to give their children accordions for God's sake? Must not like him or something. Anyway, accordion. And uh, once he matriculated to music school, he studied uh, the clarinet and the violin and the piano. Um, he soon caught the attention of local European jazz musicians and he started playing jazz uh, in uh, the area around uh, Vienna, Germany, um, uh, et cetera, uh, with uh, some of the leading, leading jazz artists of that time and in that uh, particular region. Um, always a searcher, always a searcher. Um, I remember meeting him uh, when I was a student at uh, Florida and m when he came through with the Cannonball Adderley group, and in his eyes, you could see that he was searching, even sitting there on stage, listening to conversation, you could see that he was looking way into the future. He was definitely a searcher, one of those very rare people. Um, and his career uh, bears that out. Um, so he decided that he loved this music jazz, and although he had this extensive um, classical background, uh, which means he could play technically, he needed to really learn jazz. And if you're going to really learn jazz, that means you got to go to the birthplace of jazz, which is America. So boom, he leaves Europe and he heads to the Berklee School of Music, which was a logical destination for anyone who really wants to expand in all jazz and being a very competitive uh, uh, rich um, uh, uh, area for uh, growth and exploration. Fortunately or unfortunately, there are all kinds of schools, brick and mortar, and then there are buses and trains and planes and the road of performing. After being at Berkeley for only a couple of weeks, he's approached by another European expatriate, Mr. Maynard Ferguson, hey man, you need to go on tour with me. You're gonna all you need to learn on the road from all these bad cats I got. Well, there he goes, on the road with Maynard Ferguson. And learn he did, and expand he did. But he soon tired of it, and ended up back in the Berkeley area, and uh, New York area, and hooked up with Dinah Washington, great singer. So now look at this journey. He's playing the European small groups, trios, quartets, quintets. Leaves that, goes to Berkeley with every intention of studying music for a few years there. Leaves that suddenly and goes on the road with a gigantic big band under the direction of Maynard Ferguson, loud and ferocious. Leaves that and goes to the intimacy of Dinah Washington. He is exploring all boundaries. This continued and eventually he meets the great Julian Cannonball Attlee. That association lasted for about a decade, all through the 60s. And in that time, not only did he flourish as a pianist, but eventually he started playing electric piano, one of the first guys in jazz to do that, and he composed in the African-American tradition yeah, we're talking about funk, gospel things. Yeah. Mercy, mercy, mercy. That's an Aust Austrian. The country preacher. Which is that gospel composed for Jesse Jackson. Walk Tall, which became kind of a theme song for the black power movement of the 60s. Walk Tall written by an Austrian. So Joe is not immersing himself in the music, he's also immersing himself in the culture. 
he's getting not just an understanding of the notes and chords and all that. He is getting the vibe of the people and that is coming through in his compositions. Near the end of his association with Cannonball, he ends up recording with Miles Davis on what was going to be a transition album in a silent way. We're moving from the acoustic jazz to the electric and eventually into fusion. He was a natural choice for Miles because he was already pretty much headed in that same direction. And after that, he hooked up with another Miles Davis saloon, Mr. Wayne Shorter, and they started one of the most beloved fusion bands of the 70s, The Weather Report. Yeah, co-led by Joseph Zawinul and Wayne Shorter. Man, album after album after album after album, and of course we've already talked about um, the work uh, that was done uh, with Jocko uh, Pascharius, but this just continued. And at first it was more improvisational, and then it became more rock, and then it became really heavy fusion, and they had its iterations. But remember, Joe started as a classical musician, so near the end, the music became more structured, more structured, and the more structured it became, the more that irritated Jaco Pastorius, and so Jaco soon left because of the boundaries that this evolution of Weather Report's uh, music was uh, uh, causing for him. Uh, the band continued to do great music, and uh, at some point uh, soon after that, uh, Wayne Shorter and Joe Zawinu parted ways. Wayne went down his road, Joe went down his road, uh, which led Wayne to all sorts of projects um, and also um, led Joe into all sorts of projects, including his great um, Zawinu Syndicate, uh, which I think was the last group he had. It came out of uh, the weather report, but it was a total new cast of musicians and more structured arrangements and more complicated arrangements, etc. but still with the creative and explorative signature of everything that uh, Joe uh, had ever done. Um, and he continued to tour into his 70s and continued to look like a young man and dress like a young man, everything else kind of like Miles Davis did because he was always young in spirit. And he did get ill uh, somewhere around 74, 75, and he returned uh, to Europe for his final days um, where he passed away, I think, somewhere around the age of 76, uh, still vibrant, still creative, and um, just one of the real treasures uh, of this music. Uh, by the way, Downbeat Reader's Poll awarded Joe Zawinu Best Electric Keyboardist Artist Awards for 28 years in succession. So we can talk about anybody we want to talk about, but when it comes to electric keyboards and synthesizers, the people say the best of the best has always been Joseph Eric Zawinu from Vienna, Austria. And that's the story that demonstrates how jazz has influenced every 
place on this planet and how people from every corner of this planet have influenced jazz. So we talk about world music, the world music is jazz. And Joe Zawano has been one of the captains of that ship. Thank you so much.